Well, hey there, everyone. Uh, long time no see. Uh, it's a good time for an update on what we're doing with the Todd McDonald Rolling Mill Project here in Youngstown, Ohio. So let's take a little walk around. So the, uh, the plan is, of course, for the Todd engine here to operate the two rolling mill stands that uh, we acquired from McDonald Steel. So in order to use this engine, we have to, well, number one, put it on a proper foundation. And as you can see, it's sitting up on steel and there's no concrete down there. Now, normally an engine of this size would be sitting on a foundation that's about 16 feet thick. Well, we don't have the ability to put this on a 16 foot thick, you know, 800 cubic yard block. Of concrete so a three foot <laughs> well three foot plus the eight inch slab that everything sitting on uh, foundation is going to have to suffice and um, this will all get poured sometime next year uh, a lot of rebar has got to go in there conduit all sorts of sorts of things but we're making progress towards uh, having the ability to start getting the 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 uh, concrete forms in. The one thing that we've had to do, as we talked about before, is to get make sure that the engine is lined up. And so we made a big step towards that today. Uh, we just a little bit ago did the first uh, lift of the crank and flywheel with our uh, jacking setup. Uh, my estimation is 225,000 pounds for the crankshaft and flywheel with four 50 ton jacks. Uh, we have a couple of um, hydraulic pumps and it picked it up we picked it up a good three eighths inch out of the out of the bearings mainly to verify that it was possible to do that um, test everything out and uh, you know to see that that it, that it was going to do it and do it in a safe manner and now we can move on to the next step which is the uh, the removal of the main bearings. So these bearings here, that is a, uh, a separate piece that sits in there and it's curved so that when you take the weight of the crankshaft off, you should be able to roll it around and get it up on the top of the journal and lift it out. What I want to do is add a pressurized pre-lube to all of this so when I get these journals out, or I, these bearings out, I'm going to take it somewhere so they can drill a hole that way through the uh, through the shell, about halfway in, and then there'll be a there'll be a line that comes or a pole that goes up uh, into the bottom of the bear, of the uh, uh, bearing surface. There is a groove in the babbit that runs lengthwise, and it will tie into that groove so that before you even start moving the engine you pressurize this line pushes the oil underneath the journal and then it just comes out and hopefully env envelops the entire bottom of the journal surface so when you get it started you don't have to wait for this thing to make one or two revolutions before it sucks the oil and the oil's already there so it's going to cut way down on the amount of starting force needed and it's going to cut way down on the wear on these main bearings and on the journals so that's one thing that we're going to be doing next while while it's up and the uh, bearings are out then we'll go ahead and move this high pressure bed plate and then move it over and get it into alignment where it has to go and then ready to uh, um, get it into its final location and then the other thing that we have to do is move the entire flywheel and crankshaft to the right about a quarter inch um, <clears throat> you can see that the little space right there that's about quarter to three eighths inch wide uh, that's that's too much this needs to be up much closer to the babbit there so this whole thing is going to go that way just a little bit and we have heavy duty machinery skates that'll go on my lifting rig down there and jack it up, set it on the skates, bump it over, 
um, and then it'll be right where it needs to go. So our way of determining that everything is square uh, between the crankshaft and the center line of the cylinders, uh, we've talked about before the, uh, the string line. So I've got to do some measuring here again because we, the, I took these these strings down when we were moving the crankshaft back and forth. So now I've got to go and reestablish it, make sure we're where we need to be, uh, check my, uh, my angularity here, make sure that the crankshaft perpendicular to the low pressure uh, bed plate, and do the same thing high pressure bed plate, make sure that it's uh, also in alignment then verify that the that the bed plates from forward to aft or to aft are horizontal or level level in this direction and then also to verify that the crankshaft is level in this direction at one side is it higher or lower once we get all of that dialed in and this thing is as good as i can get it then we'll start making arrangements for putting the rebar in, putting the conduit in, putting the concrete forms in, and getting everything ready for this gigantic concrete pour that we'll be doing next year to the tune of 120 yards, I think, all at one time. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm calculating, I'm figuring $200 a yard, um, that's not just a concrete, but that's concrete plus I'm going to have a pumper truck here so we can pump the concrete in place. Uh, I'm figuring the uh, the install cost is about $200 a yard. We'll be doing all our own concrete work here, of course, like we do everywhere else. Get our own forms done, get the rebar in, get everything ready to go, arrange for the, uh, for the day we're going to do it, and then what the 12, 15 trucks come out here. Uh, one after the other to uh, fill all this in. But <laughs> we have to make sure that we're absolutely, positively sure that this is where it needs to go because once that concrete's in, ah, we're done. And if it isn't right, well, then it's never, it's never moving. So, so I uh, will go over this a hundred times to make sure that everything is where it needs to be and that I'm fully confident before we do anything else. All right, so yeah, as you can see, it's it's a disaster area in here as usual. Um, still bringing stuff over from McDonald. That that's slowly petering off as uh, they're getting ready to start demolishing the buildings, and a lot of the stuff that was inside is gone uh, now. It's already been taken out, but there's there's always a few little things here and there. Actually, right now what we're doing. Uh, we're going to start pulling up the 85-pound rail, some of the tracks outside the, outside the plant, to bring here for our uh, railroad extension. So now we're down to the point of pulling rail out. So this this tank here also came from McDonald, and uh, we figured that it would make a really nice tank car. So I got a put some I-beams and, and saddles underneath here and get it attached to the to the carpenter car. But there is, is a 500 gallon diesel fuel tank car right there so that any of the uh, diesel fuel that we have in storage can just sit right on the car. Coming off the top of the flange, there will be a uh, diesel pump with a, uh, a 12 volt diesel pump with a battery on this so that you know if we have to fuel up the forklift, or the center cab locomotive or whatever we can get it right off of this car so and it also you know we have a tank car that we can add to the train to give a little variety all right let's go outside and see what we got going on out here uh 34 yards of concrete in for the uh rolling mill foundation so that's all done there's two of the mill shoes that we brought over uh, we have two longer mill shoes that go up there as well uh, when spring comes, we'll start setting the, the shoes down, put the gearbox on and everything, and then start matching, match marking the holes, and then drilling through the concrete with a core drill, uh, putting the foundation bolts in, and then epoxy them in place. 
uh, instead of trying to locate everything, you know, in the forms before we pour, we're just going to epoxy the bolts in. Uh, of course, that's the uh, low pressure uh, cylinder head over there, sitting there out of the way. Um, so what we're going to be doing here on this side, now initially, come spring, we'll start setting all this machinery up uh, and installing it. And for maybe the first year or two, all this stuff is going to be sitting outside because I don't have um, really the time this year, or actually next year, 2025, to put the building edition on. The building edition, I'm hoping, will happen in 2026. Um, but for that first year or so, uh, everything's going to be out the, in the great outdoors over here. The, the building edition actually is... I have enough room here because in Youngstown, the, the setback on the side from the property line over has to be 10 feet. And so you come over 10 feet and then there is enough room for, I believe, 27 or 28 foot wide uh, addition. Which means that this track can be inside the building. And I think from the center line of the track over about four feet to the wall is, is, is where, you know, where things will be. So that means all of this here will all eventually be inside. This track will be in the floor, passing through the building, under the overhead crane, so that when we have anything to move in here, it'd be real simple to come in here, pick it off the rail car, and then move it, or set something on the rail car to get it out of here. Um, that'll be very handy for the mill stands. We can move the mill stands, because these stands are designed to be taken off of the shoes and uh, replaced by other ones. Instead of changing the rolls in the stands, you just change the whole stand. Um, now, we do plan to operate this rolling mill for demonstrations, but we're also looking into operating the rolling mill to actually make useful products uh, because of how rare it is to have a 14-inch mill stand with the capacity to do you know, very limited tonnage and small amounts of material. That's generally when you have somebody out there that wants something, uh, you know, they, they might want something that, well, we only need a couple tons of this or a couple tons of that. And they go to the big rolling mills and the rolling mills have a, well, minimum order is 80 tons or whatever, and it's way too much, but maybe we could do something here. So not only will we be doing demonstrations, we may be able to do the demonstration while making something that also has, you know, sale value. Um, so that that's that's I'm looking forward I into the future, and I think that that's probably once more people find out about what we're doing here, I'm sure I'm going to start getting inquiries from a few people about uh, <laughs> about the possibility of using this rolling mill for making their products. As a matter of fact, two entities have already contacted me on that and working on ideas with them so it's a little too soon to say what's going to happen but i'm setting things up so that if we need to operate this rolling mill to make something that we will have that ability to do so i mean why not um so um probably yeah that yeah that building will come back here and run out here and uh probably all of this space here will be down at this lower level at track level i think it'll probably be like six inches higher and a track will be brought up about six inches to that new floor level which will put it about oh 12 to 18 inches below the top of the concrete there so that'll all sit up a little bit up where the mill stands are going to be uh, we will have platforms so you can get up to the right level that you need to be for rolling the uh, uh, steel. So whatever height those platforms need to be is what we'll put right up there. But the rest of this will just be down at this lower level. All right. What else we have going on around the property here? <clears throat> well, as you can see, 58 sitting outside. Uh, we didn't get the uh, track into the boxcar done in time. So... Uh, She's been winterized and uh, left to sit outside this winter. With that 85-pound rail from McDonald, that'll help us getting that 
track done into the box car so and she's doing all right we got uh, rust preventative on it and everything's drained and winterized and uh, she'll be just fine right there a couple other new additions some of the, the little shanties that were over at mcdonald this one was over by the 14 mil um by the shears at the end of the 14 mil so brought it over here to serve as a as a little station and we promptly filled it up with a bunch of the parts off the uh, 62 so we're going to use it for staging area for 62 parts for right now we have another one over here and this one will be the roundhouse foreman's office for the JNL narrow gauge. So we'll have our own little little office area here. If we get to running in the winter, we might put a little stove in here. So we'll clean it out and uh, turn it into something nice. But that's exclusively for the uh, for the JNL narrow gauge people. And uh, let's see, oh yeah, 62 is up in the air. Uh, the driver's taken out and uh, we're going to be uh, moving the uh, driver tires out on this one, probably when things get a little bit uh, warmer out. And yeah, not, not in any, uh, I don't have any desire to be doing that on 18 degree days like today. <laughs> All right, and just a couple other little things to look at here. So this is a, another recent addition. This just came in recently, a small shear. So figure if we're going to be doing demonstrations with the rolling wheel, rolling some little product, this would be kind of handy to have to uh, cut that stuff to length. And besides, it's just pretty darn cool <laughs> in the, uh, the clutch the clutch on there and uh it had a ac motor on We're probably going to put a dc motor on so we can run it off the dc system so yeah all right everyone so that's what we have going on here at the young sound steel heritage slash jane l narrow gauge railroad slash todd mcdonald rolling mill this place is turning more and more into an actual working steel mill um, steam driven rolling mill here served by a steam powered narrow gauge railroad i mean it's it's two acres worth of uh, you know making steel the way they did in the early 20th century uh, so it seems to be the direction we're going and well why not go there because nobody else is going there I like doing things that no one else do does. It uh, it makes life a little bit more interesting that you're you're doing things new and you're not just repeating what other people do. So, all right, everyone, take care, and I'll be talking with you soon.